the biggest of all of the extinct kangaroos was Procoptodon goliath. Standing over two metres tall and weighing up to 240 kilograms, this was an enormous beast moving through the Australian landscape. There are several telltale signs that prove these ancient kangaroos walked instead of hopped. Could this difference in locomotion have played a part in its extinction? In terms of climate, unpredictability has become an advantage in some ways for living kangaroos because they can move such vast distances in a short amount of time. Hopping at high speeds is actually really efficient. These really long tendons and muscles in the leg stretch like elastic bands and then recoil. That helps to transmit some of that stored elastic energy into the hopping. That's a response that just wouldn't have been available to Procoptodon. Once those distances are too great for this animal to move, well then it's kind of stuck and therefore at more risk to local spontaneous events like the decline in regular seasonal water or disease. All managed to grow to these really large gigantic sizes. Jenny Ornis, also known as the Thunderbird, was heavily built it resembled more a giant goose than today's emu. We found a number of these individuals across Lake Calabona. But when we take them back to the lab, then that's when you start to see these little features that indicate that something wasn't quite right with this bird. This region here is really nice and smooth, beautiful, healthy bone. But then once you come up to the top here, all of a sudden there's this lump. It's a bit rugose, there's lots of holes in it. So this bone that we have here is the sternum. And when we look using a CT scanner, we can actually see that all of this is extra bone growth on the surface of the original bone. So we also see this on the other side of this bone. And there's this really big cavity here as well, which is associated with a compromised immune system. So we have multiple genuinus mutinae individuals walking around at Lake Calabona, getting stuck in the mud and having these pathologies which indicates to us that it's not an individual problem, but it's actually a population problem. Correlate that with what was happening in the environment at the time. We start to see that there were these major fluctuations in the environment with often really severe periods of drought. Those types of factors potentially contributed to the extinction of Genionis at Lake Calabona. Diprotodons were widespread across much of Ice Age Australia. Males were much larger than females, suggesting they could have lived in small family groups characterised by one dominant male. Their large nasal cavities might have been used to make deep grunting calls. Like koalas today, low frequencies would have allowed them to maintain social communication over long distances.